Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have my December unboxings for you guys. So, I am like right smack bang, smack bang, I can't speak. I'm right smack bang in the middle of my Christmas cleaning and I have a little stack. It's not as big as it usually is, but I have a little stack of unboxings of things that have arrived from various subscription boxes in the month of December. I was waiting until my fairy loot arrived. I think my fairy loot is going to be delayed in the mail at this point and I want to get the empty boxes out of my house. I want to get this video up for you guys because my schedule is rammed. Like you're going to have a lot of content over the next few weeks, the next month and a half actually. I'm back up to three videos most weeks. If this unboxing wasn't going up now, it wasn't going up for quite some time. So in this one, we have a special edition from Fairy Lou. I paid for this. This is one of the extra special editions, not their subscription box. The other one that I've paid for is of course the Goldsboro Sci-Fi and Fantasy Fellowship. I've started a vlog series where I'm reading these books. So if you haven't seen it and you want to check out my thoughts on the actual books in the Goldsboro GSFF or the GSFF because it's not the Goldsboro. Goldsboro, Goldsboro Science Fiction and Fantasy Fellowship, but I will link that up here for you guys. And then I have my December Illumicrate, which was sent to me by the team over at Illumicrate, so thank you guys very much. I'm currently a rep for Illumicrate, so this is the December box. And if you guys would like to get your hands on an Illumicrate box for yourself after watching this video, I do have a discount code. My code is Becca5, and that will get you a discount of a three or six month subscription. So we're going to be starting off with this one. I'm actually really excited about this as well, because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter obsessing over the edition of the book in here and I'm actually pretty sure that I don't know what the book is. Um, I will have seen the theme on Instagram. I tend to read the descriptions and I like to try and guess the book but if I can't guess the book then I don't like look for spoilers or anything. But um, the theme for this month is Cursed. Do I know what this book is? I really don't think that I do but the theme for January is going to be Royal Secrets and that one is for fans of We Hunt the Flame, The Prison Healer, Priory of the Orange Tree and The Never Tilted World. I will let you guys have a little look at the spoilers. I'll be going in blind but if you want to read them you can pause and do so. But let's get cracking. I will say as well because I didn't. I usually do. If you're unfamiliar with Illumicrate they are a UK based fantasy and sci-fi subscription box. Every month you get a brand new hardback release and a selection of bookish goodies and I'm just I'm feeling the top item as I tell it to you guys which is yeah it's one of Rosie Thorne's mugs I believe so Illumicrate have a collectible set of mugs designed by Rosie Thorne I have quite a lot of them now and this one is called The Road Through Midnight so I it's not immediately obvious to me what it's inspired by but have a little look Oop, I like the color palette we like some dark blues as you may be able to see actually you can't really see very much from the background behind me but a lot of this room is navy we have two ladies on horses so I'm still not sure what this is inspired by so I will check out that spoiler card. The Winter Knight. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Paul Morosco, I think he's called Morosco, is inspired by the Winter Night Trilogy. Oh my god. I didn't mean to do him dirty like that. I really love Morosco as well and I also love the Winter Night Trilogy. Next up we have this fabric item which feels to me like it, it is. It's gonna be a pin fly. Which is good because I am always running out of space for pins and the Illumicrate pin flag. Sorry for all the rustling. The Illumicrate flags are quite large. I love the design on this as well. It's dark blue again and we have this bird is this a phoenix around the bottom with a little moth maybe at the top and this one is inspired by girl serpent thorn we then have the pin of the month in every loom crate as a bonus item although i think that this might be the last one i don't think they're doing it next year but as a bonus item you get an enamel pin inspired by the book of the month i'm not gonna look at this bit here because i don't know what the book is and i want to be surprised but the actual pin looks like a pair of hands playing playing cat's cradle yeah cat's cradle's a game right we then have oh a pencil tin yes oh i'm actually real happy about this illumicrate have done one of these before inspired by i think giddy in the ninth but this one i really like it has snakes and it says i want to survive the world that keeps trying to destroy me once again i'm not entirely sure what this is inspired by it may be oh it's ninth house because i don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this but it says leith house up there on the back of it but i put my annotation supplies in here all of my sticky tabs because they come in like cards that fit exactly in here and while i, I don't love the design 
of the Gideon the Ninth one. So I was actually thinking the other day when I got them out for Anastasia and Hero of Ages that I was hoping that I would get a new one in a subscription box sometime soon so I could swap it out because I don't love my Gideon the Ninth one. So that's perfect. We then have this sticker sheet. Oh my god, it's Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, which is one of my favourite series ever. Nevermore is actually a children's series, but it is so good. It's one of my favourite series of all. I just love it. I know I've just said that, that it's my favourite series of all time or one of them, but I'm truly in love with that series and I can't wait for book four in 2022 one of my anticipated releases we then have this which is oh it's the um the new calendar this one is the star cross lovers 2022 calendar so i will do a little flip through for you guys is the yeah the art's gonna be on the top let's see if we can recognize anyone i don't know that my first thoughts on those were nick and charlie just because one's blonde and one's a brunette but it absolutely is not i feel like that could be our violent lights these violent lights maybe uh nope i mean i will still use this calendar i always have a subscription box calendar every year but i do not know for sure is that girls of paper and fire nope wait a minute does it say there's a quote on every page does it say oh my god it does red white and royal blue okay i've read that one i should know that one these violent delights i got that one right i want to guess them before i actually have a look but we'll just run through the ones we've been through the invisible life of addy larue one of my favorite books how did i not get that girls of paper and fire i got that one correct and then this one is the raven boys okay let's try the next one. Ooh. No. Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I've read that one as well. I want to say The Poppy War. The Poppy War! I got that one right. Oh. An Ember in the Ashes? Yes! Oh my god, I'm getting better. Okay. Oh, I know this one because she's got blue hair. Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Yes! Oh, I'm having the best time here. No. Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Haven't read it. This one has to be Gideon the Ninth, right? Gideon the Ninth. Yes. Oh, I want to say Clockwork, like the Clockwork series by Cassandra Clare, but I don't think it's going to be. The Night Circus. I've read that book, but I don't love it. Okay, it's all done. That was a fun game. I think I got like half of them right. And then the last item in here is the book of the month. Like I said, I have no idea what it is, but I've heard great things. Very shiny cover on it. Which way does the book go? This way, I think. Oh, okay. First thing that I've noticed about it is that this is plastic. So, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand why people are obsessed with this. I get it. I get it now. That is so cool. It has a clear dust jacket on it. So this is A Marvelous Light by Freya Mask, which is a book that I have never heard of in my life. Seems, oh, oh god the edges on this oh this is real beautiful i yeah i completely get why i've seen a lot of people adoring this on twitter now it has been blurbed by alex e harrow who writes the witches book once and future witches that's the one and also is it the Ten Thousand doors of january as well which aren't books that speak to me especially because i don't it's hard to describe the certain genre that they are because i don't think it's like fabulism but it's not my usual thing but this is stunning so i really really want to love this um but i will read the synopsis because i have no idea what it's about. A hidden world, a magical conspiracy, a thrilling romance. I'm always down for a thrilling romance. Young baronet Robin Blythe was already in a spot of bother. He's struggling to be a decent older brother and a responsible employer and to rescue the estate ravaged by his late parents' successes. Then an administrative mistake appoints him parliamentary liaison to a secret society and he discovers magic lies beneath the reality he's always known. Soon Robin must contend with magic's dangers as well as its beauty for as he tries to find his missing predecessor, he attracts a deadly curse. To navigate these hazards, he'll need the help of Edwin Corsi, his prickly magical society counterpart, but his aloof associate clearly wishes Robin were anywhere and anyone else. Drawn together by unexpected perils, Robin and Edwin will discover a mystery as old as the power that binds the land, a plot that threatens every magician in the British Isles, and a secret that some have already died to keep. This could go either way with me, I could love this or really not like it, because it's a historical fantasy romance, in like a Victorian era kind of historical way, which traditionally Victorian era is like my least favorite historical fiction and I'm not a big fan of historical fiction at all but I would definitely be giving this a try and I think there's a big chance that I might like it because of the romance elements and can we talk not only are these gorgeous but like how the end pages like peek out to give like a yellow edge into it absolutely stunning and then it is of course signed by the author as well so pretty solid box from Illumicrate not my favorite but it's like one of the real good ones I would say my favorite item I am gonna use a lot of these which is real good so the calendar I always have a subscription box calendar I'm gonna swap my tin over to this one because I like it more than the Gideon one that I've already got and I always love a 
rosy thorn mug and even though I didn't recognize it it's a winter night one and winter night is one of my favorite series of all time so let me know down in the comments of course what your guys favorite item from this month's box is I feel like a lot of you guys are gonna say the book because it is stunning moving on I think we'll do the fairy loot special edition next this is the first one that arrived i think but i'm not in a super big rush to read it so well it's like the last month of the year i'm more focused on finishing up things i started or at least trying to at the moment so i just left this until this video but i'm really excited to Oh my god, see it. I actually just got another dispatch email from Fairy Loot as well saying that my copy of Kingdom of the Worst, ki no, Kingdom of the Worst, yeah. So my copy of Kingdom of the Cursed is on the way and I'm really excited for that one to arrive. But this one is smaller than I thought it was actually, but it is Vespertine. I'm glad that I pulled that out the right way. Oh, is it upside down though? It's upside down. <laughs> By Margaret Rogerson. I really like Margaret Rogerson. I love an enchantment of ravens. I read Sorcery of Thorns recently and didn't love it so much, which was sad because I really expected to but since i've read that a lot of people have said that they think that i'm going to end up really liking vespertine because it has all of the things that i felt was missing from sorcery of thorns so vespertine is the first book in margaret rogerson's first fantasy series and that is all i know about it i like margaret rogerson as i said so i didn't really look at the synopsis and because i was going to order it anyway and hadn't pre-ordered it i thought i might as well just go for the fairy loot edition and i am gonna try and get sorcery of thorns and an enchantment of ravens to match when they're released but this is beautiful i love the spines fairy loot do on their special editions there's some i can't point here and also you can't see those ones but there's some down there as well but they all kind of look similar we also have gold edging on this fully illustrated end pages where are the back ones are different and i'm assuming yes it is also signed by margaret rogerson as well and i can't read you the synopsis i feel like a lot of you guys are already going to know what this is about margaret rogerson does um a lot of like YA fantasy romance. But the back of this says, for a strange moment, I felt as though I were watching myself from afar, a lone cloaked figure cleaving through an ocean of the dead. The chant of Vespertine shook the ground like a drum beat. I could feel it in my bones. And then finally, we have my Goldsboro book for December. I do already know what this is because they announced it in advance. It is not one of the ones that I'm particularly excited about. I will be making my next installment in that vlog series in March, I think. So you guys will get my thoughts on this book then but we're just trying it out at the minute i like that goldsburg gives me selections that i wouldn't pick for myself but it feels kind of hypocritical to then not like want the selection when the whole reason i want it is because it's giving me the opportunity to try all different types of fantasy and sci-fi if you don't know what the goldsboro gsff no it's not the, it's just the gsff if you don't know what the gsff is it is goldsboro's monthly sci-fi and fantasy subscription they do mainly adults but a little bit of ya as well and they send you it's just like a book only they send you a brand new release that is a first edition signed and numbered in i think they're all exclusive editions i have only had three of them so far but they've all been fancier than usual like they're actually my other three are here because they've just done that first installment in that vlog series but this one is absinthe by brendan p bellicott i can't even remember if this is sci-fi or fantasy but it is set in the 1920s which i like in theory but i don't know there's something about this it's giving me vibes that it's not going to be like my kind of thing but on the front it says some it kills others it transforms it has wow they're really bright like when i look at them they don't Right, but put them in front of the light and they are yellow as i just said they are also signed and numbered and the number on this one is 1164 something that i do really like about goldsboro is that they put protective plastic sheets around the dust jacket to protect the book um oh it says it's like the same back and front but i will read the synopsis for this chicago 1928 the great war has been over for years and a brave new world forged technology has delivered the future promised at the turn of the century automata provide it's an automata sci-fi in 1928 that's why i don't think it's my thing i remember now monorail trains flash between mega cities medicine is nothing short of magical liam mulcahy remembers little of the world before the war he grew up poor but now working for one of the richest families in chicago he reaps the benefits of his friendship with the family's son and heir that's why he's at club artemis it's a palace of art deco delights and debauchery filled to bursting with the rich and beautiful and tonight they're all drinking one thing 
absinthe, the green liquor rumored to cause hallucinations, madness, and even death. While the gilded youth at the viridescent liquid, the brave new world is crumbling beneath its perfect surface, but their absinthe is no mere folly. Some it kills, others it transforms, but in Liam something different has taken place. A veil has lifted and he can see the world without its illusion, and it isn't the perfect world the government want the people to believe has real shiny under the dust jacket as well. But yeah, this has a lot of things that I really don't like in it. So it's historical fiction. What is going on here? It's historical fiction, steampunky kind of setting. And also um, I don't dislike dystopians, but I feel like it's a combination of stuff that I'm like, I'm sitting on the fence about, but I have had books from the subscription before where I haven't wanted to read them very much. And I've ended up really liking them. And as I said, I will definitely be reading this and you will see the results of that in March. So that is it. Those are my three unboxings that I have so far. There will be another one coming at some point in the future. Can't say when, but that one will feature at least my December Fairy Lou and also the Kingdom of the Cursed special edition. So stay tuned for that if you are at all interested. Please, of course, let me know down in the comments what your favorite item from the Illuminate box was. But that is it from me today, guys. I hope you have a Merry Christmas if you don't watch any of my videos between now and Christmas. Please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head into my description, box you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those and also a link to my bookish candle website the instagram for that and the etsy and a 10 percent off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go when nobody knows with guns sitting under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no